It was a full house in Brock on Tuesday at the last all candidates meeting before next week's provincial election. All six candidates vying for the Halliburton Court Lakes Brock seat in Queen's Park were at the meeting. The Tenants Association of Gillespie Gardens and the Brock Citizen hosted the event. Brock Citizen editor Scott Howard offers his thoughts on the event. The debate went very well. We had very good turnout from residents and all six of the candidates were represented. Obviously the front runners in the riding are Rick Johnson for the Liberals and incumbent Tory MP Laurie Scott. Um, I would say they fared evenly well in the debate. The biggest issues discussed on the night were funding to faith-based schools, the health care premium and the referendum. Obviously the health care premium is a very uh, unpopular tax, but uh, I think Mr. Johnson fielded the question quite well. If we want to maintain our level of service, we have to pay for it. 60 or 40 percent of all health care costs are generated by people aged 65 and over. That age group is going to double in the next 10 years. To take that money out right now, quite frankly, uh, I don't know what the system would look like in five years. And, and it's unpopular, but I stand behind the decision that this government made. Meanwhile, current MPP Laurie Scott faced some tough questions on the issue of faith-based schools. While she spoke in favor of funding faith-based schools in the past, Ms. Scott now says she will leave the issue to her constituents. John Tory came out yesterday and said that he would allow a free vote in the legislature when legislation came forward. He said that the MPPs in all parties could vote then accordingly. It's interesting that Mr. Dalton McGinty, who's now the Premier, has been in favour of faith-based funding before, but he's changed his mind. I will represent the will of my constituents in relation to faith-based funding. It was this issue that drew Ontario Public School Boards Association President Rick Johnson into the race. I am absolutely opposed to the Conservatives' plan to remove $500 million from our current four publicly funded school systems to fund private religious schools. This plan would result in a loss to our local school boards and children in this riding of nearly $10 million. I believe that we should focus our attention on improving our existing education system so that all of our children will achieve the success that they deserve. Our public schools are already open to all our children. The candidates were basically split on the issue. The Family Coalition candidate uh, was strongly in favor of funding faith-based schools through a voucher system, while the NDP, Green Party and Freedom Party were against it. Concerns about the environment, specifically nuclear power, and the health care system were a big part of NDP candidate Joan Corrigan's message. And we need to stand up for Medicare to fight for public hospitals instead of private, profit-driven ones. That's the NDP. If we have $10 for health care, $10 should go to health care, not $7 to health care and $3 to profits. When people ask me why should I vote NDP, I say vote for New Democrats because we represent the interests of ordinary working people. Vote NDP because we have thoughtful and practical ideas to make working people's lives better and more affordable. Vote NDP because we'll fight for high quality public services and vote NDP because we put ordinary people first, always. Green Party candidate Doug Smith said most people know his party stands on the environment, so he spent his time explaining how the mixed member proportional system would work. The uh, Green Party's um, uh, program is uh, to make as wide uh, a publicity about its list, list candidates as possible because we're actually proud of them. We're not involved in cronyism and it's very difficult when you go public to actually conceal what you're doing. So our lists would be zippered. That is to say, um, to make up for the gross imbalance gender-wise within the legislature, we would work female, male, female, male, female, male, that way. Then, cross-cutting that, we begin to think about representation at the level of bioregions, not these arbitrary writings that we have here. Jacob Pothar has ten children and is concerned about the status of the family in our society. And if kids come home to nobody home, then that's, that creates a problem. If they're being raised by MTV, we've got a pretty messed up generation. We need to help the family in such a way with responsible taxation so that our families can have a stay-at-home parent. Whether it's mom or dad, I'm not worried about it, but somebody needs to be home when the kids get home. The candidate that most surprised me was Bill Denby of the Freedom Party. 
I believe he won over the crowd quite well with uh, many of his responses. I've been at Queen's Park. I've met with both Conservative Agriculture Ministers, NDP, and I had a lot of respect for the NDP Minister, Mr. Buchanan. And agriculture has gone downhill since we had him as a minister. But I can say very clearly, the minister that represents the Liberal Party doesn't represent agriculture. We've asked and requested numerous times to meet with this individual with no invitation extended. What they very clearly do is, we're at the bottom of the barrel, and that's what farmers are looked upon. We're treated as that until it comes election time, then they offer us something. And as for incumbent Lori Scott, after serving her first term in the opposition, she's ready to put her party's policies into practice. Our plan will help increase access to health care, doctors, nurses, decrease wait times. We want to help provide security to farmers so they can continue to work the land and to run their businesses. We're going to increase funding for public education, $2.4 billion over the next four years. Our future and our children's future depend on it. We're going to fix the skyrocketing property taxes and put a 5% cap on property assessments. We'll provide safety and security that our seniors deserve through access to their locked-in pensions and get rid of that unfair, regressive health tax. Election Day is on October 10th. For more information on the candidates and the various parties, visit mycoartha.com slash elections. I'm Rika Sakelli.